Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Isaiah 119 says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. One of, one of the means of listening is humility. Are you willing? Are you willing to listen? And, and what is a sign of willingness? In some cases, is holding your peace. But sometimes, holding your peace can also be a sign of rebellion. I don't want to listen to you. And I have nothing else to say to you. So I'm not going to even talk to you. That definitely is not going to solve an issue. If, if you have the strength within you to make the decision to be able to commune with one another, and I'm talking about when you're having heated discussions, and you control your emotions in the battle, because most of the time it has to come to, comes to a trust factor. Do I believe you? Do I believe your words? And that's why I asked you, why do you believe in God? His, his word is true, guys. His word is true. So if you believe in God, you, you are going to what? Trust him. Whatever you believe. Why do people smoke cigarettes? Because people smoke cigarettes, right? They're, even Christians smoke cigarettes, right? Yeah. Why do they smoke cigarettes? Because they don't believe what it says on the side of the cigarette pack. They don't believe it. Because on the side of the cigarette pack, it says if you smoke these things, what will happen to you? You'll get cancer and you'll die. Yeah. It doesn't say it like that. But there's something written there that says that if you do this, this is what will happen. What about alcohol? And again, I'm not picking on anybody, okay? I'm just using this as an, an analogy. What does alcohol do to the liver? Yes, it starts tearing it apart. So when you know these things, have you guys ever seen um, muriatic acid? And, and, it, and if I put lemonade next to, next to muriatic acid, and you look at both bottles, which one would you drink? Oh, that's hard to tell. Different so you can't tell. You can't tell. Well, what, ter what determines which one you'll drink, I guarantee you, if you open the cap up, <laughs> you'll smell it quick, right? The acid would just go right up your sinuses. Yeah. So you'd be like, oh, not this one, Yeah. right? But the reason why you don't is because on the, on the side of that little pack, they have a skull on there with an X. It says if you drink this, <laughs> you, can, you could die. Yeah. Knowledge. So if the bottle, the bottle says that, and you have enough sense to know, I'm not going to drink that bottle. I'm going to drink the other bottle. Because yeah. right. that's lemonade. Then how come we don't do that with other things in life? What are the double yellow lines in the street for? You guys, you know when you're driving down the street, right? Freeways, the state. It, it's, it's so that it can protect your life. Because yeah. if you cross over, if you're going on the freeway, and there's no barrier, no K-rail there, and you decide, I'm going to go around this traffic on the other side of the freeway, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem. Right. So there are things set in motion, lots of laws that are there to protect you, to bless your life, right. to enhance your life. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. But are you willing? Are you willing to listen? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Nobody obtains anything without sacrifice. Right. You got you to give up some stuff yeah. in order to get what you want. Right. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, so now, the greater your vocabulary, the greater your means of intelligence. And this is why I, why I am leaning towards this, because if we're going to communicate with God, is God smart? Yes. yes. Maybe smarter than us? Yes. I mean, the whole universes are held up by His Word. Mm -hmm. He knows how things function. <laughs> if, if the stars are misaligned, what happens to the earth? Major destruction. So the Lord knows laws are set in motion for our benefit, okay? So the greater intelligence, the greater efficient communication. So this is, this is why I was getting into this, what are the four types of intelligence? 
We have intelligent, you see this according to psychologists, yeah. there are four types of intelligence. So now we're going we're gonna to fine tune this a little bit, but just so you have a, an idea. Intelligence quotient, emotional quotient, social quotient, adversity quotient. So you see that? Yeah. These are the intelligence or the quotients that are out there. And quotient means measurements. That means they sit behind a glass door and they do a scientific study and a glass mirror and they look and study people, study their ways different age brackets, and they put them under different stress tests and everything else to determine what kind of IQ they have or EQ, SQ, or AQ. Okay? So now, four types, which is intelligent quotient, emotional quotient, social quotient, and adversity quotient. So here is intelligent quotient. Remember this? I'm helping you guys out. I'm giving you so you can see this. So this is the measure of your comprehension ability. And this is, this is good to have. You got to have this because it's going to it's going to expand your your mental capacity. Right. You got to have so we want our capacity to what? To increase. Yes. Absolutely. This is why you got to have a reading library. You have to read. I know most men don't like to read. Believe me. I know it. But I still do it because I know it's going to create a capacity that's going to be good for me. I can retain things more. I'm able to discern and make judgments. I'm more quick to make decisions. Right. And of all the things and all the strengths that females are looking for in a man is decisiveness. Making a decision. Because if there's a lack of decision making, what happens to the wife or the female? What happens? Insecurity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fear. So it's got to be decision. You got to be able to make decisions that are going to be good for you. Right. Okay. Good for the the two of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So emotional quotient. Um, well, yes. Verse uh, intelligent quotient. This is the measure of your comprehension ability. Solve maths, memorize things, and recall subjects. Emotional quotients. This is the measure of your ability to maintain peace with others. Keep to time. <laughs> yes. That's not that funny. That is interesting. Keep to time. <laughs> That's part of the emotional. Don't you just love when people, you give them a time, of whatever you're going to do, and then they're late? Oh, no, I'm not pointing out nobody, okay? All right, okay, but doesn't it, like, you can have a birthday party, uh, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. A lot, I think a lot plays more out when you're going to work. The majority of the time, they want you to be there on time. And if you're not on time, what happens? You get written up. And if you keep on doing it, what happens? I'll see you later. You go find another job because this is not important to you. And that's what it's implying. And this is where I'm going with this. How important is the person next to you? Ask that person next to you, how important are you to me? How important are they to you? Does, does that person's life matter? Does it matter? That means the time matters. That means the person, that individual, that matters. Even if it's a little thing. That's why my family, my wife and my girls, they get upset. Like, you ever been in a conversation? I, I have a thing with birds. So when we're driving down the way and they're, in a, they're going, you know, they're going and they're telling me stuff and then I'll look, I say, hey, check that out. There's a, there's a hawk there. And they'll immediately stop and like, why do you do that? I said, we got an hour drive. We can, we're going to be able to, you can get right back on the subject. It was just saying, this is, it was just a bird. That's it. It's not important. But how does it sound in, the, in their minds? Like it's, it's, what they're telling me is not important. And life has, to <laughs> life has to matter. Things have to be important. You have to make it important. Why? Because they're important. Yes. Not every woman, I mean, not every woman's going to, I can't measure every woman by my wife. Because not every woman's going to like the things that my wife likes. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that your woman or your spouse is going to like that my wife will not like. And it won't matter to her. That's just part of life. Right? But you have to learn it. And if you're choosing to marry each other, or if you are married, then you're going to have to choose to die to yourself on both ends. Not just one-sided. 
it has to come from the both of you or it's not going to work. We, we have a responsibility to increase our relationship with one another and I'll tell you the first person you want to communicate with is who? Is God. Because you're going to need the strength and I'm telling you it's, it is a strength thing to control your emotions. Is it not? Yeah. You know, the way you feel? Yeah, it is. Okay, so here's another uh, further on in the, in the definition. So be responsible, be honest, and of all the things, I know Christians don't lie, right? You, you don't lie, right? You don't lie, right? Christians don't. No comment? What? Nothing? You guys don't lie, do you? Oh, no. You don't lie. Nobody. No, Christians don't lie, right? Right? Christians don't lie, right? I'm, I'm being rhetorical in this. Obviously, Christians do lie. <laughs> Christians do lie. <laughs> and here's the thing. What is the reason for it? It's your pride. The reason why Christians lie is because of pride. What's the pride? And how does it play out? I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be corrected. So what do you do? You lie. Didn't I ask you to throw the trash? You did? No, no. No, it's not even that. It's not even that word. It's more of a, huh? I don't remember. What? What do you mean? <laughs> and then you become, what is that called? Uh, uh, convenient um, amnesia. amnesia. Yeah, convenient amnesia. You, you, you forgot. Uh, I, oh, you did? Oh, uh, okay. Well, I did ask you, and I asked you with that intended purpose to get the trash thrown, not because I'm trying to tell you what to do. Hey, hey, why is it that men have to throw the trash? Why can't women throw the trash? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You, you know why the men do it? Stinks. Yes, because it's a courtesy for our wives. <laughs> because we love our wives, right? We love our women. Right? Yes. Right. <laughs> okay, emotional quotient. That's enough of that, right? Be genuine, be considerate. All right, social quotient. This is the measure of your ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time. And do you know that throughout life, the process of life is entering and leaving, right? That's just the process of life. You're not going to stay in friendships and relationships with everybody. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to have some people that you're going to come in your life, they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave. Yes. So that is just what happens. But then there will be those individuals that you will have for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. That's the social side of things. Now, should we get that from school, guys? No. no. Is school intended to develop your social yes. quotient? Is that what is intended from God? Is it intended from the curriculum that we have today in our school system? Yes, it is. And there's nothing wrong with it, but school education was not intended to develop your social skills. Where should we develop those skills? At home. You learn your manners at home. On the table. If you can't reach across the kitchen table, why are you trying to reach across the world to help everyone else? You got to work with what you got at home first. You got to do that. It's just a, a normal practice, right? So people that have higher IQs and SQs tend to go farther in life than those with high IQs, but low EQs and low social cues. But remember, where do you get your SQs from? Social cues from? Where do you get it from? From home, guys. I guarantee you, you, right? You know, thank God for, for parents who have their children and you're able to raise them. Having mom and dad in the home, it sets a normality. Right. It's, a, it's a great thing. Just that alone. Now, as a parent, be there. Be there for the kids. Be there for the children. That means like the way my, my little great, and I did this for my, all my kids because they were very demanding. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Is that the way it is? It's just, I think it is demanding. So, and then they would come to me, and now my, my baby, uh, my granddaughter, she comes to me, same with my grandson. Papa, Papa, and this is the way she is. It's just constant. Papa, 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 until I what? Acknowledge her. 
Yes, Cindy. Yeah. And then she says whatever, and I have no idea what she's saying. <laughs> and then back again, Papa, 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 until, and then I respond again. <laughs> if I leave, yes, Cindy, what do you want? <laughs> so she goes down the list. <laughs> but what does that do, though? What does that do? It makes them feel important. Makes, gives them what the basic demands for life are, it are acceptance, affection, and approval. Those are the basic demands in life. So that gives you what? A sense of belonging. Do we not all want to belong? Yeah. Yeah. You want to feel part of something, right? That's normal. That's the norm. Now, we can live in la-la land and try to live an isolated life, and you, will, you, you can live that way, and you will, you will become a weird person. Yeah. <laughs> it's an abnormality. It's not the way we're supposed to live. When we get to heaven, how are we going to be? All of us together. Not going to be no blockage anywhere. So we're practicing that, practicing now. Amen? Yeah. All right. So most schools capitalize on improving IQ level, while EQ and SQ are played down. A man of high IQ can end up being employed by a man of high EQ and SQ, even though he has an average IQ. Your EQ represents your character. Your SQ represents your charisma. Give into habits that will improve these three Q's, but more especially your EQ and SQ. All right, shall I repeat that again? Yes, please. I mean, you guys are seeing it, right? Okay, so your EQ, EQ represents your character, your SQ, remember EQ, emotional Q, right. it quotents, and your social quotents represents your charisma. Um, is charisma part of, is that really you? Charisma. No. Is that really you? Uh, no, I mean, character is totally different. Character and charisma. Charisma is like you're, you're, you're very expressive and you're uh, influential, right? Well, we know that. We see that on in Facebook and YouTube and all of the different medias that are out there. It doesn't mean it's real. There are some people who can communicate better on face, Facebook than they can in person. They don't know how to talk like this face to face. Yeah. They're afraid mm -hmm. to talk that way. The way they are bold mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. This is the real. This is not. A screen is not. No, sure. Like I said, I can't be married to my wife through a screen. I can get married to her, but I can't kiss her. Oh, well, French kiss the screen? Oh, yeah. Well, kiss the screen. How about that? <laughs> can't do that <laughs> right but I mean do you get the picture <laughs> it's not real it's not real it's a picture these are pixels they're what zeros and ones is that what all of, all the computer stuff is it's not real yeah well who's real touch the person next to you they're the real they're the real and this is where it counts this is where the rubber meets the road and this is how you treat one another right here okay so EQ and SQ make one manage better than the other uh, please don't teach children only to have higher IQs but also to have higher EQs and SQs so now here is the fourth one because this is the one that most people don't even want to talk about this is the adversity quotient and in the majority of the time when it comes to things that are wrong things that are not working out, it must not be the will of God. <laughs> Don't just throw in the towel, guys. Yeah. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Be ready for a battle because everything that comes along in life that you're going to grow into, mm -hmm. it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some adversity. Right. You are not going to get away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, husbands and wives, and those of you that are together as husbands and wife, and, and to be husbands and wife, do you guys, like, mesh 100% of the time? No. I mean, we're going to be 40 years married. Mm -hmm. We've been together for 43 years. So now, do you know that to date, we are still learning each other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're still growing. Two different individuals, guys. Mm -hmm. And this is, what, this is what makes life beautiful. Yes, it does. Because it's not a negative. When you come together 
as husband and wife, it really, that bond, that covenant that's established there, that union allows for productivity. Constantly banking off one another. Here's the strength that comes along with it. You're able to make decisions and it starts to come quicker. Most people are afraid of making a, a, a choice, a decision. Mm -hmm. Be strong about your choices. Mm -hmm. So the measure of your ability to go through a rough patch in life and come out without losing your mind. <laughs> AQ determines, adversity quotient, determines who will give up in face of troubles and may abandon their families. And it unfortunately does happen that way. Now thank God, thank God for soundness of mind yes. thank God for people who are sound mm -hmm. and that are are willing to step up to the plate I fortunately had my niece come into my home and we were able to sow into her life from the time that she was given to us and we were her guardians her guardian and raised her up and she has things in her today that she will never forget there's no doubt about it. We're already getting calls. Yeah. See, yeah, they may have gone out for a little bit. They may have gone wayward, as the phrase goes. They may have gone out there and done whatever they're doing. But the fact is, is that you've sown some things into their life. And it matters. It matters what you speak into their life. And this is, this is where you got to remember this. God, God never punishes us. God is not the punisher. Who's the punisher? Satan is. And then we help him punish ourselves, right? But God corrects us. And that's from a place of love. He does not punish us. He does not use sickness. He does not use disease. He does not use poverty. He doesn't use lack. He doesn't use none of that. Because in heaven, because remember, we're supposed to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth earth as it is in heaven that's how we're supposed to pray right mm -hmm. yeah. so we whatever's in heaven we're supposed to experience here on earth mm -hmm. that was the whole thing about giving Adam dominion over this earth realm so it's normal for us to live in wealth and health and prosperity it's abnormal for us not to But why is it that people still experience that? Because they have no vision. They set no goals. Have we done our list of 50? I asked everyone to do a list of 50 things that you want to do and give a time frame and categorize them so that you have some goals to press towards. Because if you lose sight of goals, you're going to start losing in life. You have to do it. And if you keep that development going, you're going you're gonna to win in life, guys. I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I hate losing. I hate losing. I like winning. I like, do you all like winning? Yeah. And I know we're teaching the kids all this, you know, courtesy about there's no points in game. That's, mm -hmm, that's not good. I was going to use another word, but I said, it's, it's like, come on. We win in life. Yeah. Think about it. Out of 500,000 nope. shots in your mother's womb, you were the one who made it. You fought to get to the egg. To get there. <laughs> You're the winner. You won. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to stop here. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. I trust this has been beneficial to you. And please remember to like, subscribe, and what's the other one? Share. And share it. And share it. <laughs> we'll see you on the next time. All right. Blessings to you. Okay.